I hope you are well. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Trisha Miller. I hope you'll stick around today. So I am very excited. I've been looking forward to this for a very long time. The day has finally come to start my declutter and organize series. I have a goal for 2024 to declutter and organize our home, top to bottom, side to side, every deep dark corner of it. We are starting with the most important room today and that is the kitchen. I feel like that is where I spend my entire life. So every time I've been opening a drawer or opening a cabinet and things have been falling out and attacking me, the anticipation has built. It is finally time. I also, before we get started, I want to remind you guys, I am giving away $100 to say thank you to all of my subscribers. My one year YouTube anniversary is coming up on February 3rd. All you have to do is enter. All you have to do to enter is to make sure you're subscribed to my channel, watch all my videos in January, and leave a comment. That's it. Thank you to everybody who left comments on my last video. I really love hearing from you guys, so I hope this will continue after the giveaway. I just love getting to know you, hearing all about your lives, so please, please, please keep leaving those comments. All right, let's make a big iced coffee and get started. Let's talk strategy. I have to have a plan in order for this to be successful. So the first thing I did was clean the kitchen. So it's pretty decent right now. I need a lot of empty counter space. I have our dining room table so that I have places to put the things that I wanna donate, things that might need to be thrown away because they're broken, things that I need to take out of the cabinet for a moment so that I can put it back in to organize it. So first step was to go ahead and clean the kitchen so I have a nice, clean, empty, slate to begin with. I think our plan is to start with this side of the kitchen and then just keep working our way until we're done. We got this. All right, let's start. Okay, here's our first section. I think my plan is gonna be like top to bottom, move over to the next one, top to bottom, and just go that way. So we've got this cabinet up here. Oh yeah, lots to go through in that. This drawer. Not too bad, but definitely could be a little bit better. And then this is the cabinet where I put all of our mixing bowls and baking sheets, stuff like that. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna follow the same method for each area that we declutter and organize today, and that is removing everything from the space. That way I can go in and vacuum up any dust or anything that's in there, get it nice and clean and just a clean slate to begin with, and then go through all the things I removed be very real with myself about what I should go ahead and donate and then put everything back in a more organized way that just makes so much more sense. So what I am going to do is I'm going through and decluttering all the things that I know right away I'm ready to donate or get rid of. And then I have you know the few items where I have that internal debate of will I use it, won't I use it, things that have survived past declutterings. What are some things that have survived your declutters before? Do you go back and look at them and declutter them the second time. There are some things I'll admit that have made it through several declutter situations in our house, but today is the day. They will not make it through a third. We are going to donate today. This drawer is a good example of a space that is organized, but just because something is organized doesn't mean you don't need to reorganize that. So it wasn't working. We had these ketchup packets and these sauce packets from Chick-fil-A in there for a very long time, which by the way, I could not find expiration dates on those. I looked, so it was time to get rid of them. And then I just wanted to reorganize it. It wasn't working the way that it, we had it. The spoons were shoved under the measuring cups. We couldn't find them. So 
You don't always have to keep a system. You can always reorganize to whatever works best for you. Okay, I, we've had these for almost two years, so I think they're gonna have to be thrown away. And then I can put these in a different spot with all of our other paper products and plastic utensils in the pantry. As much as I would love to think that I will use this to open an avocado, it just doesn't happen. So I'm gonna donate these, we don't need these, donate, donate, and donate. And then I think the drawer is so much better now. She goes her own way, like I don't give a damn girl. And my God, she owns it. So many heartbreaks, goes back to 2014. And I think that she knows it. Taking their shot, but missing out on the cut. I think she knows that she drives them crazy when she's looking like that. The way she's moving makes them want it so bad. It's the attention that we wish that we had. Yeah, it's almost cruel, cause I want her to. Oh, yeah, I'm Okay, here's a strategy for something that you haven't used yet, but you keep telling yourself you're gonna use and you really wanna keep it because you really, really like it. Put an expiration date. So I bought these last summer. They're very cute. They're little whale dipping trays. I mean, you can use them for a lot of different things. Not dipping trays, dipping bowls. But I didn't use them last summer and I'm pretty sure I bought them at the beginning of the summer. So I'm gonna get them. Hold on, I dropped my post-it notes. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to give them an expiration date of July. That way it'll be halfway through the summer. I'm not gonna give these guys until August. If I don't use them until, you know, and through July, I'm donating them. So I highly recommend doing expiration dates so that you can be real with yourself if you don't use them. Now, this might motivate you to use them by the expiration date. Then say to yourself, okay, maybe I'll give a second expiration date because I'm sure I'll use these by July since I know I have a timeline. But then if I don't use them again the rest of the summer, I don't need to keep them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna trick myself into seeing if I actually really use them. So I like this strategy. It works for me. Highly recommend it. All right, let's give them a little expiration date. Think she knows that she does some crazy when she's looking like that. The way she's moving makes her want it so bad. Gets the attention that we wish that we had. It's almost cruel, cause I want her to. Oh, yeah, I'm going in circles just to make her react. My heart is racing, yeah, I want her so bad. I want to kiss her, but I know for I would have never known what this is except it's labeled a crown bracket and a flexible duct. These have been here since we moved into our new construction home 16, 17 months ago. I have no idea why we kept them. I don't even know where they go. Let me know in the comments. Where does a crown bracket go? A flexible duct, should it be in our home somewhere and it's missing? Is that gonna be a problem later? I'm guessing it's probably extra. I don't know, I'm gonna have to consult Steven on this one. If we keep it, it definitely needs to go in the garage, not taking up an entire shelf in our kitchen. I leave the TV on, I'm done with your sad eyes. I can take another night with you on like this, so let's go.
Okay, this is so much better now. I do want to put all of my spices, at least the smaller containers down here, into pretty jars with labels. I just don't think that's gonna happen today because then I'm gonna lose focus and momentum. So for right now, they're gonna stay there. So stay tuned for a future video. We make that look a lot prettier. But then up here, I have my bigger spices and I love using the Tina Turners because now I can reach everything and I don't have to like be reaching behind and knocking stuff over. So I have all of my sprays there and then some more cooking oils up here. And then Steven's little secret candy stash up there. He's super tall, so he can reach that no problem. But the kids can't reach it, so this is perfect. This drawer is what motivated me to actually start this declutter series. It's, it's just too much. There's too much stuff. And this is a good example where you could still really like something and use it on occasion, but it doesn't mean there's still a place for it in your home or that you need it in abundance. I had too many spatulas. I had so many different whisks. I've never used a whisk before. I'll be very honest there. I just tend to grab a fork if there's something that I have to whisk, so I donated all three of those. So again, you could like something, you could use something, but it doesn't mean you need five of them. This cabinet is by no means bad. This is my all of my meal prep containers, so I use it very frequently. I just wanted to rearrange things so it wasn't so bottom heavy and then use the top a little bit more efficiently. It just wasn't organized and I, it just wasn't a good use of space there. So I just wanna rearrange this. And if you are into healthy meal preps or you have some new health goals for the new year, I just wanted to give you a little plug. My video on Tuesday will be a healthy meal prep for the week. I'm gonna share a grocery haul, my meal plan, how I plan dinners for the week with our family, talk about some swaps that I do so that I can still reach my health goals but not feel like I'm making 87 dinners to appease everybody every night. So definitely stay tuned on Tuesday for that one. These drawers I feel good about. We don't need to do anything. Stephen and I have done a really good job, in my opinion, of just buying pots and pans that we need. And so that's really organized. And then down here, we just have two larger ones and then the thing that goes on our stove. So I feel really good about that. So I'm gonna leave these drawers as is. I wanna take some time to talk to you guys about my mindset with decluttering and organizing and my motivation behind all of it. I am a person who gets very overwhelmed and overstimulated with a lot of stuff around. I tend to get in a grumpy mood. I'm just not the person I wanna be when I just get overstimulated by all the stuff. And I notice that my kids tend to be the same way. They are just, they just thrive. When our house is organized, when we have systems set up, they just do so much better than when it's not organized and things are not set up. And so my motivation is just to keep our family healthy and happy and feel peaceful in our own home. And so a big thing, a phrase that I keep coming back to for myself is just protect your peace. And for me, having an organized and decluttered home 
definitely protects my peace. I also just think it's really nice to donate things. I always think about who I could be helping when I'm donating an item and that really helps me on the items that I am just torn whether or not I'm going to keep it. I just think, is this really bringing value to my life? Probably not if it's just sitting in the back of a cabinet or in a closet and I really focus on what value it could bring to somebody else. And speaking of donations, a huge tip that I have for you is go ahead and schedule your donation before you do your declutter project. So I have, we live in Virginia and we have the AMVETS and they can, you can schedule online and pick the date that they will come and put everything out on your front porch and they will come and pick it up. And that's huge for me. And I scheduled that donation for the very next day after I did this declutter because it also gives you, if you're quick with your donations, it doesn't give you time to take things back and kind of have second thoughts about it. It's gone, it's out of sight, out of mind. And if you don't have a donation center that will come and pick up from you, just schedule your day so that you will go immediately that afternoon or that next day to drop off your donations. It really makes such a difference to have that plan in place. This cabinet, there's definitely some stuff we can declutter, especially up here. I would like to take the mugs and use a little bit more up there so we don't have to double stack them. So let's just see what we can get rid of. Okay, I have another little pep talk and words of wisdom for you. It is okay to have empty space. It is okay to have empty shelves in your kitchen and not fill them with anything. When I see empty shelves in our house, it just brings such peace to my mind. You should try it and see if it does it for you. Okay, much better. I put wine glasses up there and then just like everyday glasses right there. All of my mugs that I would use for tea, the smaller ones, are gonna go there. And then here is all of the coffee mugs. And then I'm gonna donate all of these. Okay, I have a situation, and I wanna share all the good, bad, and ugly of a decluttering series. So I will be honest here, this is a mug that Liam made for me. It's super cute. It doesn't say when he made it, but I think it's his little thumbprint. I've never used this mug before, and I know there's a lot of things that I've already held onto that he has made with his sweet little hands. I was gonna do an expiration date on this, but I know I'm not gonna drink out of it. There's just so many other mugs that I gravitate towards, and it's smaller, so I would never have a teeny tiny cup of coffee. I go large when I go coffee. For my tea, again, it's hand wash only. I just, I know I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna talk myself out of it. I'm not gonna talk myself into it, I'm gonna talk myself out of it. So I guess this is just, a public service announcement to anybody who's feeling the guilt of getting rid of something that their kids made for them. You gotta release the guilt. If we hold on to every single thing that they make for us, our house will just be taken over. So let this be your justification. You can get rid of stuff, especially if it's hand wash only. Now some very important information if you are going to get rid of stuff that your kids made for you you have to hide it in the trash can or in the donation bag because they will come for you if they see you getting rid of stuff they made you. I wanted to refill 
my bag holders while we were in there. And I will say, I really like these bag holders. It's one of those products where I hesitated thinking it was just a little bit too extra, but it's not. They actually hold the bags really well and keep everything organized, especially when little hands are grabbing bags. It just works better than the box that they come in. And then you'll see me making an expiration date for my food scale. I used it a lot more last year, but I just haven't really been using it lately. So it's one of those items where even though I've used it a bunch in the past, it no longer is serving me right now for where I am at in life. So I'll give it an expiration date. If I don't use it, then it's time to donate it. This cabinet has become a bottomless pit for us. It holds so much stuff, but not in a good way because you forget things that are in there. And so I wanted to declutter. And then when I go back to organize everything, I wanted to make sure I could actually see everything that was in there so that I will actually use it and remember that I have it. And the things that are brand new in their package that have just been sitting there, clearly we've survived without them for this long. So it was time to donate them. all of the user manuals that I've been holding on to. I'm not a read the manual kind of a person, neither is my husband, so we're just gonna rely on Alexa or Google if we need to figure something out. Okay, this is our cabinet above our microwave and oven. I did already organize this in a video a few months ago. I will link that video. I'm just gonna clean it up really quickly, make sure there's nothing I can declutter, and then we'll move on. For those of you who were judging me for throwing away the cup that Liam made, I'll have you know those pot holders were made by my children. So let's be friends again. I feel like everybody has one item that they don't really use, but they feel like it's something they have to hold on to. And for me, that's a bunt pan cannot think of any time that I've ever used a bunt pan. I have two of them. I am gonna declutter and donate one of them, but I just have to hold on to that one for, I don't even know why, I can't justify it. What is your one item that you always hold on to that you never use? Okay, we are making really good progress. We are now on to the blue cabinets. I wanna show you, I don't have to do anything with these. This is just where I put, and I'll give you a close up, all of my microfiber cloths, and then our dish towels go in the bottom two drawers. So this is, this stays really, really organized. I also just removed my holiday towels the other day. So, and then I put back in like winter towels and just like neutral everyday of the year type of towels. So this is good, I'll show it to you, and this is just a trash can. So we'll move on to baking sheets and cutting boards in the far cabinet and then we'll finish up all the white cabinets and then I think the last thing we'll do is the other side of the island which is gonna be a lot because that's those are the kids cabinets they're bad all right let's keep going
in the moment, moment And don't go wait until the morning, morning You never know when it is over, over All that I know is we'll get older, older So let us dance this side away Here's everything I'm going to donate. As much as I wanted to be the person that uses these to clean my bottles, I just don't. So I'm going to donate those. This is an example of something that I love so much, but I just never use it, no matter what. So I'm just going to donate that, donate this guy. I, I always get so excited when Starbucks does these, and I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to go on the day just to get the hot beverage, to get these cups, because I know that I'm not going to use them. All right. We're gonna keep going. All right, it's junk drawer time. Look at that junk drawer. Oh my goodness. It's used multiple times a day by my children, by Steven and I. So when a lot of people are using a space, it just tends to look like that, and that's okay. The junk drawer is the spot where you typically have to declutter and reorganize it all the time, and that's okay. You're allowed to have that space in your home. Junk drawers exist for a reason. It doesn't have to be Pinterest perfect everywhere in your home. That is the junk drawer's existence, but we are taking it on today. The junk drawer will not win today. I will win today. I will get that junk drawer organized, and then probably in a couple more weeks, we'll be back here and we'll reorganize it again. We can do this. Okay, I've reached the point where I want to give up because I know what is to come, but we're gonna keep on going. I purposely saved the hardest part of this project, which is these cabinets and then those two cabinets on the island. I saved them for last. Normally I start with the hardest thing and then work my way to the easiest, but I was worried if I started with these cabinets, I would get burnt out and not wanna finish. So far it's working because I am motivated to do it. I don't want to do it, but I am motivated to do it because I know it's gonna feel so good. So we're just gonna do this, but I just want you to know it's okay to kind of flip your mindset when you take on certain projects if you need to, and that's what I did this time. All right, let's keep going. Did my explanation just make sense? I might have just confused things. The whole point is I started with the easiest part of our kitchen and I ended with the hardest because I knew when I took on a big project like this, that I would burn out if I started with the hardest part. And it actually worked. And I will say these cabinets that I'm doing right now, the kids' cabinets, weren't as bad as I thought they were. They actually went pretty quickly. I'm just taking everything out. Then I'm going to declutter, recycle papers that they had already drawn on and things like that, make my donation pile. And then I ended up having a bunch of empty bins once I did that. And again, I'm not gonna fill them because empty space is okay. And I will just save those bins and put them in there. And then this summer, the summertime is when I tend to refill them and kind of reorganize things so that the kids have extra stuff to do during the summer. So we'll revisit those empty bins in the summer. And it just feels really good to get this done. And it's okay to save the hardest thing for last because sometimes oh, that's the nice reward at the end. Once you finish the hard thing, you're done.
Okay, this is the last area we have to do. It's definitely gonna be the most challenging. I did get these from the Target dollar spot. They have them right now, they're $5 each. I think these, yeah, these smaller ones are only $3. And my plan is to use them in these two cabinets. So let me show you what we're working with here. I do have some system set up. I mean, it's a disaster right now. But like, this is where I keep all the papers that come that we need to file away eventually. And then in here, this is where, oh gosh, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, we don't even use the top two shelves because I can't really reach them. But this is where I have a file folder for each of the kids, so papers throughout the year that I feel like I want to keep long term. I put those in there. Okay, and then these drawers, I have the organization bins already in here in like, you know, some sort of a system with our battery organizer, but I just need to go through and clean stuff up. We don't need to have all these screwdrivers in here, like put things back to where they actually belong. And then over here, it's kind of the same thing. It's just a hodgepodge of random stuff. Like Rory's six years old now. Pretty sure I don't need labels for bottles for her anymore. It's kind of hard to let go of that stuff, right? All right, so we'll go through this. And then down here, this is where it gets even more random. We have our homework bin. If you watched my back to school organization video this fall, I apologize for what has become of our homework bin. It is still a good system, we just have to get it cleaned up. And then just a bunch of random stuff in here that's been shoved in there, so we'll go through that. And then the last cabinet is this one. I can definitely declutter some of all those vases down there. I had a system going like envelopes and stuff were there, tape and tape. Well, one was flashlights, one was tape. Now they're all put back together. So we just have to clean everything up and declutter.
this stuff I do have to go through and I know it's gonna take a good chunk of time. These are just all the cords and I wanna do that part with Steven. And then these are just binders. This is where I keep all my recipes. So I just wanna update that and then find a spot for that one. But I think I'm just gonna take tonight when Steven and I are watching a movie and just knock it out and then I'll be done with it. And these are all the donations that we were able to get together. It feels so good to get rid of this stuff and pass it on to somebody who will actually use it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope this gave you a starting point and some motivation and ideas for your own decluttering project. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to follow along for more. And don't forget about my giveaway. Leave me a comment. I'll see you guys next time.